good source, which is the family. I think what I think what what we're seeing is like there's she was a very very private person. She was she she was she kept herself pretty well isolated. She was very conservative, and um, and I think one of the dangers is since since everyone does know so little, um, is that she's easy to pin things to or stigmatize with, and she's been the one that that the media has done a lot of that too because there's no picture and um, so it's or, or or there's not a lot of information about her so I think we need to guard against that but unfortunately I wish I could answer the question better there's very there is very little information we have about her other than the fact that she was a caring uh, housewife and one of the things I can tell you guys I had discussed with the family about the housewife is that they're very traditional in the sense when the family would go over to the house they wouldn't all be together in the room the women would sit with the women and the men would sit with the men but that is a very traditional way of acting it wasn't anything that was different so the men did not interact with her and the brothers did not actually ever see her face they've never seen her face because she did wear a burqa so they just knew her yeah, she was totally covered. So they just knew her as Saeed's wife. Did you speak English, too? She did speak broken English, but her main uh, language was Urdu. Looking back at all this, obviously, the explosive devices, that, that took a long time to make those. It took, you know, planning to get whatever they were wearing, these, these vests or whatever they were. Was there a painted picture for us, for the family? I mean, are they looking back now and saying, well, you know, when they did, you know, X, Y, and Z, that, that sort of now that makes sense. Now now we realize that's what they were. No, the do. family was, to be honest with you, they thought Saeed's hobbies, and which they still they still were, um, was building cars. You know, this was his thing. He liked to go in his garage, and he liked to work on things. They never used to invade his personal space. That was his man caves of sort. He used to go into the garage and work on things. He used to build shoe racks for his sister instead of allowing, making her buy one. So the family was taken by shock. You know, they're very remorseful. And this is something that took them and just hit them as hard as anybody else. Did the family ever go in the garage? The family would just go in there just to see some of the things that he might be working on, like his car. But one of the brothers even explained that he wouldn't really go in there because when he would just go in there, it would just be for play dates. His yeah. daughter and um, his daughter would be playing together, but that would be it. They never noticed any of the guns or any of the arms? Well, they, they were aware of the guns that were at the house, but they were also aware that the guns were locked up in a case. I mean, when we talk about guns, we're talking about, like, from what I understand, there was two 9 millimeters and then there was, and there was two rifles. Um, but that was what what we know that was for target shooting before then um, but there was definitely never evidence of any of the other things could you characterize the level of, of, of uh, Saeed's mechanical ability I mean he had this hobby but I it, it wasn't something that he had gone and got in a formal education for. It was something that he had picked up by watching his father, reading books. He read books about, you know, cars, mechanics. It was mostly car books that he was reading, and he was learning as he went along. You said that he had been made fun of uh, by someone teased. who worked, by, teased by, by, about his beard. What, is that something he talked about a lot? I know there was a, a man we interviewed yesterday who had very strong religious beliefs, uh, and his wife talked about that. Is, did he say you know there's a, there's a guy at work who's been harassing me or i think it was just a general conversation that he had with the family when he explained that oh somebody just made fun of my beard but that's part of the concern i think is that um we can't lead uh some intolerance to lead to further intolerance or in addition there's times when these things happen um in all sects of, of american culture where someone is disgruntled or gets made fun of or is uncomfortable or is an antisocial person and they lash out and they do bizarre things like in columbine or wherever in um you know in colorado recently it, it's uh it's hard to attribute just to just to the religion of islam or muslim people and all muslims like i said are condemning this act and and we're all praying on behalf of the victims, and we all feel terrible about what happened. But experts will also say if this was a work workplace type of shooting, there's always some sort of sign leading up to it. You're saying the family did not see any sign whatsoever well, for this beard. No, the family just knew that he was made fun of the beard. You know, there wasn't anything else. He had just told the family, oh, somebody made fun of my facial hair. You know, and his job, he had to keep his facial hair kind of uh, trimmed up a little more because of the type of job that he had and, um, in the county. So that's why he had told the family about this uh, situation. And mind you, he was a pretty private person. So for him to share some information, you know, that's why the family had conveyed that to us of what actually happened at the workplace. Yeah. There's been some conflicting information out there about how the couple met. Do you have any idea about their personal history? Today? Yeah, the couple met through an online dating website. It was actually a marriage website. 
Um, they had met. They had interests that, you know, they matched up. Was it a Muslim website or? Well, we don't actually know what kind of website. We were actually trying to find out more information about the website with the FBI as well. You know it's still ongoing. It was? it was about 2013. Well, so then how do you know about this? Uh, the family <coughs> and us have talked about this, as well as um, the FBI. In the, the investigation. Yes, in person, Excuse me? Do you know when they met in person? So they met online sometime in 2013. They probably met in about 2013, and then they ended up getting married closer to the 2014 time period. Did they meet in person at any time before that, or would that been the first time they, they, um, they got together? So he had went out there for a Hajj, mm -hmm. and then they went ahead and they met, and then they got married a short time after that. So that's two separate trips. He went there for the Hajj, and then he came back a second time. And that is our understanding, yes. Did he meet with her personally when he went to the Hajj? No, um, at that time, I think he might have met with the family, is what we understand from the family members themselves. There have been unsubstantiated reports that it was the wife who could have been radicalized and somehow involved her husband, unsubstantiated, I know. But I'm wondering if any of the family members saw anything to suggest that she perhaps was more dominant than a submissive Muslim woman in my tradition would have been. She was very soft-spoken. From the conversations that we've had with the family members, they explained that she was a very soft-spoken individual. Yeah. The women were the ones who were able to communicate with her, since uh, Saeed did not want anybody else to talk to her because of the tradition that you know he was focusing on. So they said she was very soft-spoken, she was nice, and mind you, they only knew her for about a year and a half or so. What do you know about her? Nothing. Absolutely nothing at all? Nothing. They live in Saudi Arabia. That's all we know. Are they concerned for their safety, the family? Have they had any threats? And what are, what are they the family members in Saudi? No, no. I mean the family here. Oh, yeah. They've gotten uh, threats. Um, it's been a consistent kind of thing. They've gotten phone calls. They've gotten people threatening them uh, through Facebook. They've deactivated everything. Um, the brother was misidentified. Rahil um, was misidentified as Saeed. Um, and that's... Uh, it's a really bad situation to be misidentified as an active shooter while he was in work in L.A. County. Is her family Pakistani or Saudi? Whose family? Her family. Who? Uh, Pakistani. They're Pakistani. And they moved to Saudi Arabia? They moved to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. When she was 18 or 20, um, she, she went to Riyadh, uh, Saudi Arabia, to get married uh, with Saeed. Yes. Did the family see them Wednesday morning when they dropped off the grandchild? <laughs> I think there's been some confusion about what they did with the grandchild. The mother lived with Saeed and his wife. So they were going off to a doctor's appointment, and they left the child with her. They didn't actually drop off the child anywhere. Since the mother lived there, she was taking care of her grandchild at that time. Did they have any strange behaviors that morning? No, they, they actually had the stomach flu earlier. So he had told the mother that they were going to go to a doctor's appointment, and he was going to take his wife to the doctor's appointment. If the mother lived with him, then she never noticed anything going on in the garage or anything at all? I guess what I would say is this is just so, this is just the stereotypical uh, situation of what takes place every time there is an event like this. Most of the time no one knows that much about the shooter and the same thing was here, it was the case here. The mother um, stayed to herself. I think she stayed upstairs and, and so she would have been separate and not really known much about what was taking place in the rest of the house. Um, and everyone is always surprised by these incidents and the same thing is true here everyone was in shock there was a tendency to look for a network a religious affiliation an imam an extremist group uh friends um lists of lists of uh you know people that went to the wedding anything that could be there to find some type of a a terrorist network and, and, the, and the FBI was doing their job. We're all angry. We all want answers. We all want security. We all want to be protected. But nothing came up, and that is what is so shocking about all this. And I guess I just feel the need to emphasize that so much because we just have a tendency to, to characterize it in that way. And unfortunately, it was, just, it was really bizarre to sit through uh, the interviews for four hours and not, f and not find or see anything. But that's exactly what happened. There was nothing linking this to uh, religion or terrorist-related activity. I mean, they have their own investigation. I mean, they're not necessarily just because they're interviewing. But they're the FBI, and they're damn good at getting this information.